Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Night of Misfortune bringing you yet another replay of the week Supreme Commander 2. Of course we are back with our Supreme uh, or rather Serpents Championship Series uh, League Season 1. This is round 11 I believe, so we only have, no, round 12. We only have two more rounds left including this one, so it's getting very very close. Of course there will be a playoff uh, at the very end and who knows there should be another uh, league coming up soon so stay tuned for that join the OSS discord server for your best chance to get updates for that and also please join my discord um, of course I hold uh, game nights there and just join in on the fun and participate in the community anyway without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the game and pause at six seconds let's go ahead and jump in three two one play and let's introduce our players so on the left we have our blue UEF commander, AA Rainbows and Unicorns spawning over here and starting up with uh, an air factory it looks like and uh, probably going to be filling up her mass extractors and her opponent on the right we have our green Aeon commander, we have AA Fortuna starting with two land factories so far probably going to also fill up those two mass extractor spots with his ACU. So two clad mates going up against each other. There's nothing better than that. Well, actually, probably there's rivalries, of course, and so forth. But um, nevertheless, these two players most definitely have played with each other quite a bit of time. While these players take some time to set up, looks like the first air unit is, of course, a bomber over here from Rainbows and Unicorns. I did want to mention that uh, I apologize for not making a video last Sunday. Uh, this is actually in place of that video. I've been sick. Perhaps you still kind of hear it in my voice. Um, so I just wanted to hold off. I actually haven't made many videos at all. I haven't posted too much uh, on my channel, as you can probably tell. First units from Fortuna are Shajas. Of course, it's not really the greatest uh, idea to go to go blind research like this because now, of course, Shajas are not ideal in this situation. However, Fortuna is managing to get that third uh, land factory, so that is going to help him out, push out, which is what you want to do against an air player like this. Uh, I'm actually going to speed up the game to plus two here. While Rainbows and Unicorns here... Uh, gets her second air factory. She's continuing to pump out those bombers. While Fortuna is not too keen on pushing out, what I would have done in his place is I think put this uh, air factory up a bit closer here and maybe an anti-air station and just try to push your opponent. That would have been very, very strong against the person that's opening up two air factories, which is very, very strong here uh, on this map, especially because uh, as I mentioned before, the mass points on this map are very very far spread apart and you just cannot feasibly cover them without air so if you lose air and your opponent manages to you know get uh, 10 fighter you know even eight eight bombers is really really good on this map uh, two pass-throughs on a single mass extractor is definitely nothing to scoff at uh, they will be able to fly around your base and take out all these mass points pretty much uncontested um, as uh, because again those even if you do you have engineers back there it's gonna be so hard for you to complete that anti-air tower because these planes will target down those engineers of course both players uh, do have r their radars, although I don't really understand the positioning of Fortuna's down here is uh, not quite uh, far enough um, as it could be, because as an air, as an anti-air player, you do want to kind of huddle together, um, and this is what I'm talking about here. Rainbows and Unicorns is already sending her planes over here to the uh, right hand side and trying to intercept any kind of expansion here of course nothing is coming out uh fortuna did build uh it looks like just one no two uh three four uh anti-air uh mobile anti-airs which are not going to do too much and we actually do see gunships coming out for rainbows here which is going to be which is going to make it difficult for fortuna even more to stay kind of passive in this game and going to force him to push because of course once those gunships amass a critical point they will be super strong and will be able to snipe there's a lot of mobile missile launchers in this group too so let's see if rainbows can target down those mobile missile launchers those are of course the high threat targets however there's no bombing run coming out 
and uh, it looks like Rainbow is not targeting down those high target priorities here. There is no point in targeting down those um, uh, those tanks because if you take out that anti-air, that is basically going to be all she wrote for this army because as soon as those fall, those will be done. Uh, he's, he is managing, or sorry, she is managing to take out a lot of these mobile missile launchers which will for sure stop Fortuna's advance here and Fortuna is forced to retreat pretty much all the way back to his base which is a very the last thing and a very unfortunate thing to have to do as an anti-air player of course now he has all of this amazing mass to reclaim and that ladies and gentlemen is nothing to scoff at always be reclaiming your mass as the wise and uh, great um, caster Mr. Steal Your Girl suck up that yummy yummy mass and get it, all the benefits that it provides uh, by the way, also check out Mr. Steel You Girl's channel if you have not already. Uh, I still have yet to find somebody in this community who is, you know, a player who's around who doesn't know about his channel. But nevertheless, please do check him out. Um, air continuing to do damage, although at this point there's a lot of anti-air and I'm not so sure that staying in here is quite a smart idea. However, Rainbows and Unicorns does manage to continue to take out these units left and right, just taking all sorts of uh, anti-air fire however but none of these um, gunships have went down I believe it's been mostly bombers so far these gunships are ridiculously strong I have no idea why the developers made them so because uh, that is the reason why we see so many snipes or part of the reason why we see so many snipes uh, with gunships Rainbows and Unicorn is of course using her um, advantage here, map control, to basically spread out everywhere. We see her very, very nicely spreading to the back, which of course is going to provide her an even better late game than this air provides. And that is another reason why you just have to push your opponent. You have to make them respond and make more defenses to your push, otherwise they will be able to do just what Rainbows has done here. Wonderful, wonderful play, wonderful strategy by her already on four air factories, and of course this, this, uh, this land force is not going to do anything. There is one single tank, even if it makes it across, all sh all rainbows has to do is bring her ACU up, and then it will be all good. Uh, I'm not sure why um, he is splitting his units like so as well. Finally, we do see some more tanks going up, and of course, this is probably going to be the most important unit here, that mobile missile launcher. Also, Fortuna is doing a great job, as I mentioned before, reclaiming all of that mass, which is a very, very good play. Unfortunately, there's just so many gunships at this point, but if I was Rainbows, I'm not sure about running them in like this headlong. Um, definitely need to be at least waiting for a shield or going around and sniping your opponent. Now there's a lot of anti-air here and most of it is over here so if Rainbows manages to get her units around the map and uh, snipe her opponent um, that is going to be pretty pretty good for her and she's probably going to succeed in doing so because this anti-air is not going to make it back in time. And there's no shields over here, so Fortuna is very much in the open. Let's see if he's going to start bringing his ACU back. Meanwhile, I would be pushing these tanks as hard and as fast as possible. This mobile missile launcher has no use going back all the way over here. I don't know why it's being pulled back here. All three of these mobile missile launchers, in fact. And uh, Fortuna is doing the smart idea, uh, getting his ACU uh, out of that base. And uh, Rainbows is just going to use this opportunity to take out some of those vetted mass extractors. That is going to be very good for her again in the long term just starving her, her opponent out and uh, just gonna make it very 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 difficult for Fortuna to make it out alive if this push down here does not succeed unfortunately there's just three four anti-air units over here so that's not gonna be very um, very efficient for him he's continuing to lose his units he lost two land factories two mass extractors I'm not sure I would have focused fire on those land factories I would just starve my opponent out those land factories cannot function without mass extractors of course and Rainbow's is doing just that over here there's no anti-air as I mentioned previously he's gonna clear out all of these tanks and that is actually a significant portion of his tanks over here so um, I would stay around here and finish off that tank but no I mean at this point Rainbow's has so many tanks that she is very very good um, to go forward she might even be able to snipe this ACU is out of position quite a bit so um, I don't expect her to sit back 
quite a bit longer. I also don't expect her to really engage this army. However, I have been wrong before and it looks like she might be actually engaging here. There's still no shields on this unit, so it's going to be very, very difficult. There's so much anti-air here. However, these gunships do have a lot of damage and they will be able to pick off a lot of these anti-air units. So we'll just see who manages to uh, prevail here. A lot of those gunships are in the red uh, and I don't know where they're moving there. They're getting shot at in the face. A lot of anti-air is falling down as well. Looks like she's doing a very good job prioritizing those uh, anti-air turrets. But like I said before, there's just so much anti-air here that that is not the smartest of ideas to be running headlong into that. Meanwhile, Fortuna has managed to rebuild his mass extractors. He's doing such a great job reclaiming that mass. Um, and that is probably what's keeping him sustained here. I, I also don't really understand why Rainbows has stopped producing... Um, Looks like there's another radar going down here. Um, <clears throat> why Rainbow stopped producing bombers? Because she could be clearing out all of these mass points uh, right now. And that is what's going to help Fortuna come back into this game if he does indeed succeed in getting some um, um, advancements over here in the flank. Um, however, Rainbows has a little nasty engineer down here and she might be able to get a, li a little cheeky capture um, and oh, I almost missed this. The engineer down in the north has managed to build up three research stations, which I mean at this point uh, Rainbows already has so much research points. So we'll see if Fortuna notices this and starts control king some of these mass extractors. Another run through by these um, gunships over here and they're just trying to focus down again those anti-air, uh, mobile anti-air uh, tanks. What are they called again? Kra Krados. That's just such an unintuitive name. This this uh, this engineer looks like he wants to build something, but he should be capturing it. And uh, I don't think a lot of gunships have fallen here. Three have fallen over here, and that's just not enough compared to look at this just streak of death that is leading directly towards Fortuna's base here. He is managing to squeeze out a lot of land factories. Of course, those two missed vetted mass extractors do allow him to do so, and all of these um, also uh, mass extractors over here do allow him to do so as well. Looks like Fortuna finally notices this capturing engineer, but not before he loses one of these mass extractors over here. And Rainbow's just continuing to expand um, pretty much everywhere. You just see a sea of blue gunships coming across the map here, and at this point, this is a lot of gunships. They are able to snipe an ACU in the matter of seconds and uh, unfortunately I don't think even if this army was to make it back to the ACU that um, it would be able to take out this many gunships so it's all of a matter of Rainbows finding Fortuna's ACU however she's still focusing down on um, factories I'm not so sure why um, that is not something you want to focus down in this situation. For, or she the, she manages to get some more mass extractors over here on the right, however. Pulls back her gunships, probably going to try and take out some of these expansions, which is not a bad idea to do. I think she's just a little concerned about the amount of these anti-air Krados. Jesus, I can't even... Such a hard name to remember. Why would you name a unit like that? Uh, Krado. And again, engaging in that army. That is just... Um, just going to spell... Um, doom for your gunships here. I mean, there's a lot of gunships, but that is actually their weakness is too many targets at the same time uh, because they do so much damage. One single target is not really worth it. There's a point defense coming out here as uh, Rainbow shut down, shuts down um, the expansion efforts of Fortuna. And Fortuna does lose a significant portion of his economy. Of course, he does have eyes on the ACU now. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think these gunships are going to be enough. A lot of them are in the red here. And I'm just surprised that Rainbow's... Oh no, she does have shields on her gunships now. And she just has an extreme, ridiculous amount of la or air factories. And I'm not so sure why she's building so many point defenses. Um, that's just not <laughs> something very useful at this point. And Fortuna only has anti-air at this point, so... 
not the best use of mass in this case, but at this point she's so far ahead that it really doesn't matter. Fortuna is managing to get quite a bit of mass extractors, but unfortunately I think at this moment is just a little too late. There's nothing that Fortuna can push with, and um, these gunships will just be able to take anything that he does build very, very quickly. We do see Harvogs coming out finally, which is what he actually needed from the start. Um, I think going shot just was just a little bit too much for his RP and you just see this this shield ball of gunships over here oh my goodness taking out several units at the same time so good such a powerful overpowered unit just melts through that army without losing it oh well maybe she just lost one single gunship here in that mix and she's just gonna gun straight for that land factory I guess never mind I'm um, not so sure why she's so keen on destroying these land factories, I mentioned that before, because she can just go over here and snipe the ACU. Um, but, uh, you know, I guess the coolness factor does have its effects. Uh, I'm really not sure why she just doesn't finish this at this point. And uh, she does continue to pick off structures here, and she finally does see the ACU. And uh, even then, she just seems to... I think, I think they need to have a grudge or something because, yeah, there's definitely nothing preventing her from taking out Fortuna's ACU here. And Fortuna does go down in game one. Uh, fairly exciting game. I think it's uh, very important to review a game like this. If you're struggling with uh, air, I think uh, I pointed out some good things to, you know, note when you're going against an air an air player Fortuna just sat in his base for just a little too long and of course that's not something you want to do um, because your air opponent will be able to spread out on the map as we see uh, Rainbows was able to spread out basically everywhere uh, so that was game one don't go anywhere I'll be right back with game two stay tuned Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is match two between AA Rainbows and AA Fortuna. This one is going to be on Iskillian Coast. Now I forgot to discuss the maps last time and I actually haven't even pulled up the statistics, but I can say from my memory Iskillian Coast is not played too often here in this league. Um, unfortunately, uh, I think people do pass it up for the reason because apparently people think that Aeon is just a little too good on this map, but um, and maybe you can see that a little bit from the statistics, but nevertheless, I, I do think that this, is, this map does need to be uh, tested a little bit more, and of course, um, I think it's um, a little bit overestimated or underplayed rather and I do think it's more balanced than people think. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the game. We are paused at 5 seconds, game speed 2, uh, unpausing in 3, 2, 1, go. Let's introduce our players. In the bottom left, we have our blue Aeon player. This time, she is Aeon, so we have AA Rainbows and Unicorn starting with one Air Factory and two Land Factories queued up. Looks like here that it's going to put a burden on her economy here. And of course, this map is not as great for um, th this type of build because these mass points are so far spread and your economy is just not going to be as strong in the beginning. Um, and her opponent in the top right, we have the return of the green Aeon commander. We have AA Fortuna 880 spawning here and building two land factories. That's going to be pretty good. That's a fairly standard build. It's going to allow him to keep expanding and not put a burden on his economy. So we shall see what exactly these players decide to go into. Now, Rainbows and Unicorns is scouting with her Aeon or with her player plane. Gosh, I can't speak today, um, as always. Um, but her, she's doing something very, very smart. She's pausing her air factory. Now, that is some mind games. That's some Jedi mind tricks over here because um, she's trying to elicit a, kind of an emotional response from Fortuna, who has just lost to just a massive amount of air that Rainbows has uh, procured in the last match on Powderhorn. And uh, let's see if Fortuna does indeed overreact here. Uh, so far, nothing but tanks coming out for our green Aeon, but he does this time try to push out forward with his ACU. Now, Rainbows actually resumes air production on uh, on her factory here, uh, but she did manage to get two uh, land factories in the process, and her economy is actually actually better. Better than Fortuna's. Wow, that is uh, very, very surprising. She's actually up a mass extractor. That is very good play from Rainbow's good build. You can just see 
um, that she has been um, practicing a little bit. Um, so that is going to allow her to basically stop this push, although Fortuna is getting a third land factory, but it is quite a bit far back and we do see a lot of anti-air coming out now which is a little a little bit of an overreaction i think and, and again a smart move by rainbows i don't know if she, if she does want to fake this kind of air play into land play because she's still producing air but she's pushed out with two planes now kind of hinting that she's she continues to produce these units and of course she has a lot of tanks and Fortuna still does not have a radar he has no idea that his opponent has this much air maybe now barely he can see it on his ACU's radar but unfortunately he's just not pushing far enough again these MMLs would be so useful in this situation and to try and take out some of these uh, land factories but He's just uh, sitting back now. Rainbows is managing to bombard um, this mass extractor in the back. Unfortunately, there's one uh, one anti-air unit making its way back here. However, I think these planes will be able to take care of that pretty easily. Rainbows just continues to do just an amazing job spreading. Um, and again, Fortuna's hesitancy in this case is is gonna lead to him uh, kind of losing his advantage that he's built for himself with all these tanks. He probably still has more tanks than his opponent, however he is still overreacting with just the massive amount of anti-air, mobile anti-air tanks, so... And Rainbows is just not committing a lot to these planes. The main, the main bulk of her uh, efforts is going into these uh, ground forces, these tanks. She's just popping out tanks over and over again. And if she manages to get shields on these things, it's going to be game over because Fortuna spent so much. Oh wait, just kidding. The anti-air uh, do not have, um, do not need to be researched. My bad. I, for some reason, I was thinking about anti-missiles. Rainbow's continuing to expand, doing exactly what you want to be doing when your opponent is uh, hesitant and uh, you have air control. And we now see um, Bada, Bada Booms, Buddha Booms, I forget how, how you say those. Buddha Booms, Bada Booms coming out. Uh, that actually makes me think of the um, fifth element. Bada Boom. Uh, anyway, uh, so we have, uh, I'm not sure why Rainbow's didn't pick off this. Uh, anti-air gun here because uh, it's just one and uh, it's not going to do that much damage and probably one bombing run at, run at this point will do the trick however she is using her air to good effect here and she's going to bombard this mass extractor here unfortunately again Fortuna is just bringing uh, over three anti-air guns here uh, maybe rainbows will manage to pick it off no it's still at half health and uh, Fortuna is doing a good job here, uh, splitting up his anti-air. Four land factories now, um, that's equaling Fortuna's here, and Fortuna has been spending a lot on uh, these Bada Booms anti-air and MMLs, so this ground force is now stronger for Rainbows, and Fortuna is just spending way too much efforts on uh, just other structures here. He did get one research station, but unfortunately his economy is just not going to allow him to play that longer game here. He really did not do a good job expanding here. Meanwhile, Rainbows is basically expanded to the second player spot here. And uh, her economy must be very good. She's getting a fifth land factory, making nothing but tanks. Let's see. Yeah, she already has shields on those tanks. So that is going to be very, very strong. Um, of course, Fortuna is going for um, teleport at this point. He has all of his um, land factories paused. I'm not exactly sure. Does he still not have a radar? Wow. I just realized, oh well, okay, so he has a radar on here. That makes more sense um, and a good idea. I would be very, very disappointed if he didn't. Or he still has his uh, factories paused. I'm not sure. I think he's floating quite a bit of mass here. And look at that. He unpauses just as Rainbows pauses hers. And she's doing just, just the right thing here. Getting five land factories. And is going to go directly into that uh, research station. Beautiful play here. A lot of energy generators as well. I'm sure she's probably nearing that um, teleport herself. Now that she's got um, shields on her units. She probably also... Um, 
is very close to that teleport because all she needs is those, uh, what are they called? The reinforced hull or something it's called. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Fortuna has it by now, but there's just not enough tanks in this mix. Actually, he went shields as well, so I'm not sure what his tech choices were, even if he even has teleport yet. He's just barely getting his sixth, uh, or I guess seventh land, fa land factory already, but Rainbows is just right there. She's on six as well. I would love to see her using her air a little bit more here uh, to get some of these mass extractors. She can definitely be doing so. And this air is really just not really useful back here anyway. So um, not so sure why both of these players are playing so passively. Um, I think uh, Rainbows has scouted Fortuna multiple times and she knows exactly what these units are. There's way too many bada booms here. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total with the ones that are on their way. I don't know if that's worth it. That's just too many bada booms for this composition. Too many uh, MMLs um, for this composition and uh, all. All Rainbows needs to do is just get that get that teleport and really not even need that teleport. She could just vault up to this army and that's not going to be a lot of damage in her units to be completely honest here. So um, probably what we're going to see is a single teleport here that will decide the game. Finally Fortuna pushes out and is going to start using that, those uh, <laughs> mobile missile launchers that he should have been using a long time ago. Uh, that's their first shot fired for the game. Not really sure why both of these units in this kind of matchup, in these two faction matchup, uh, like so many anti-air here, or, so, or sorry, so many mobile missile launchers. Wow, that was a great bombing run by Rainbows here. Um, she's going to be able to take care of this army even easier now. Um, look at all of this just, just pile of death here. That is a lot of units. Uh, went down to maybe one or two planes lost by rainbows and I'm still not sure why she's being so so passive about this she has clearly just the stronger force here especially with a bombing run she will be able to uh, really dispatch of this army very very quickly here um, she has managed to expand all the way over here starting another row of energy generators to help her teleport There's no doubt in my mind that she's going to teleport by this time just like Fortuna has been going teleport for quite some time here Just so many tanks for rainbows here She can just like I said queue up her movement forward and then if her opponent stays in a ball like this All she needs to do is use her planes man a bombing run here would just wreck everything um, of course um, the person that has the ball it has does quite have does have quite a bit of an advantage in this game. Uh, let's see if that air will move across. Now she's engaging with her air. She does see that her opponent is in that ball. Fortuna still does not see it. Still does not spread. And a bombing run coming in directly into the center. A lot of units go down there. Um, unfortunately for Fortuna, the shields were able to hold on some of the other ones, but you just see the green army melt away, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be game for Fortuna. He's trying to escape into the water, but that's just going to prolong the inevitable. There's nothing Aeon can get on the, on the water, especially at this point, that will save them from these tanks that are floating anyway. So... This is going to be a very um, quick game too also, uh, well I guess it's 15 minutes so it's not that quick, but um, it was a good game nevertheless, well played by both of these players, uh, Fortuna and Rainbows did a great job here, um, uh, Fortuna did struggle with some air uh, this time around, I think he was scared of it just a little bit too much, but nevertheless I hope you've learned something, I hope you've enjoyed this replay, if you have any suggestions please do let me know, if you have any replays that you'd like me to consider for replay of the week, again it does not have to be from the league you can join my discord server links down in the description below and you can post them in the special uh, replay submission chat that I have on there so please go ahead and do that also please like and subscribe to my my channel if you have not done so already and uh, let me know what you like to see in uh, future videos thank you very much for watching and I will see you next week